So one last thing we're going to do for a project template is we're going to add in the phaser three uh, type definition for the library. And the reason we're going to do this is it will improve our development experience while we're looking with the library. Uh, Cause once we add in those types, we'll be able to get built in IntelliSense while working with the phaser three object. And then that way we get all things like autocomplete and documentation while we're working in our code uh, in VS code. So as an example, if I come back to our main.js file, if I type phaser and I do dot, you can see the IntelliSense isn't really giving us anything to work with. And so as a developer, it becomes very uh, troublesome to work with this library um, inside my IDE. I can go to the documentation and find everything I need there. Um, but to have just a better developer experience, I can get that inside my IDE. And so to do that, the first thing we need to do is get the type definition for the library we're working with. And so if we come back to GitHub, uh, where we had the uh, phaser uh, repo, there is a link to the types and a reference to it in the documentation. So you'll see we have this TypeScript definitions. It can be find in the, found in this types folder. So if we go into that types folder, you'll see there are a number of files. The only one that we're interested in right now is the phaser.d.ts file. And so what we'll do is if we click on view raw, this is going to give us the phaser types uh, for the current version of the uh, library. Um, so right now this is 3.60, uh, but in the future this could be thing like 3.61. So to make sure we have the right uh, version of the types, what we can do is if we click on this button here, we can now switch our branches or the tags of the code we're looking at. And what we want to do is we want to look at the v3.60. And what this will do is it'll give us the uh, types that we need for the current version of the library we're working with. So then what we can do is we can either click on download to download the file or click view raw to go ahead and view the raw file. So I'm just going to go ahead and download it. All right, and so then once the file is downloaded, uh, what you'll want to do is we're going to place that in our uh, project folder. And we're going to go ahead and place it in a specific location. So what we'll do is under our source folder, we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call this types. And inside the types folder, we're just going to place that phaser.d.ts file. And so if you're not familiar, the .d.ts, this is a TypeScript definition file that defines all of the types that are available on uh, the code that you're referencing. So in our case, the phaser3 library. So now that we have the phaser types available in our IDE, what we need to do is we need to tell the IDE where to look for those types. And so this is really easy to do with VS Code. We just need to add a file called jsconfig. So what we're going to do is at the root of our project, we're going to add a new file. We're going to call this jsconfig and .json. So it's a JSON file format. And so inside here, we just specify the options that we need for the types to work properly. Um, so to do this, we're just going to do compiler options. This is an object. Inside here, we're going to specify a module and we're going to target ES6. Then what we'll do is we're going to also target ES6. And then finally, we're going to turn on check JavaScript. Um, so what this will do is it's going to check our JavaScript code for errors and report it to us. Um, so by default, this is false. We're going to enable it for our project. All right, so if we come back to main.js, what we're going to do is we should now be able to reference our global phaser object and we should be able to reference the properties and methods on it so that that way we have our IntelliSense. So as an example, if we come back to our phaser.game, if we hover over it, we'll see now that this gives us our documentation for the phaser game instance, as well as the type of the parameters that can be passed when we create this class. So also when we now refer, when we try to uh, pass in those configuration options, you'll see now we have the IntelliSense and the autocomplete option for when we want to uh, create this instance.
All right, so one last thing we're going to do to our project template is we're going to change how we're referencing the phaser library. Uh, so right now we're referencing it from the global window object. And if we ever want to update our project in the future to use things like NPM or convert it to TypeScript, uh, we would have to import the phaser library in some way. Um, and so right now with how we're doing it, we're going to have to reference that global object everywhere in our code. And instead, we'd like to abstract this away to a separate file. And then that way, if we ever need to make that conversion, we only need to make it one spot instead of throughout our whole code base. And so to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call it lib. So we're going to use this to place any third-party code that we use in our game. And then in here, we're just going to create a file called phaser.js. So inside here, we're just going to go ahead and export out our default phaser object. So if we do export default, and we'll do window.phaser. What this is going to do is it's going to grab a reference to that global phaser object that's on the window. And then in our code, we're going to reference that. So instead of referencing the global phaser object like this, what we're going to do is in our main JS file, we're going to do import phaser from dot slash lib slash phaser JS. And so this is just a, a minor um, change. So then that way in the future it makes it much more easier to refactor our code. And it sets us up for that. Uh, so if we come back to our browser and we look at our game, we should see nothing has changed and we should still see our canvas element. As a reminder, there will be a link to the completed source code in the description of this video. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the content. If you did, please consider liking the video and leaving a comment. Also, to be notified of when the next video is released for this series, please make sure you click the bell icon. Uh, for more great Phaser 3 content, please check out some of the links on your screen now.